Dan here. I wanted to do a little talk on souring microbes. A lot of people ask me what are the microbes that are involved, what do they do, um, what are the different types. So I wanted to go ahead and do a video on that and let you guys know what are the basic microbes involved in souring beer. Now before we begin, it's worth noting that Lambic brewing, which is the traditional brewing in Belgium where they use spontaneous fermentation, includes thousands of different kinds of, well, different species of microbes. But in American sour brewing, we've kind of narrowed it down to the main players. So we're going to focus on those, which is Saccharomyces, Britannomyces, Lactobacillus, and Pediococcus. Before we start talking about these microbes, we need to talk a little bit about biological classification or ta taxonomy. I think that understanding these microbes on a taxonomical level, um, this is just basic biology 101, but understanding these microbes on that level can help you kind of differentiate between the two types of, or between the four types of microbes. And seeing it in that taxonomical structure kind of vi helps visualize the difference between these different kinds of microorganisms. So really quickly, the biological classification system in science is just a way of categorizing organisms, living organisms, based on their characteristics. We all are categorized in one way or another through the system. So you can see that there's a higher level of, of classification, which is broad in general, and then it narrows down as it goes down to phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. By the way, a species name comes from the genus and the species. So the genus will be capitalized, the species won't be capitalized. And those two names will be the scientific name of a species. And the species will also have a common name. For example, Saccharomyces cerevisiae is ale yeast commonly. So when we see organisms classified in this way, we can see that they've been done They've been classified this way because of their characteristics. And things that are in a higher level uh, of the classification, if they're separated out that high level, you can say that they're very far apart from each other. For example, animals versus plants. That's one of the kingdoms also, fungus and bacteria. So I'll start with the two bacterias, Lactobacillus and Pediococcus. Now Lactobacillus and Pediococcus are also are in the same family. These are souring organisms. They're also called lactic acid bacteria. These produce mostly lactic acid. They convert sugar into lactic acid. Some of them will also produce carbon dioxide and some other things as well. But they are primary, primarily responsible for the souring of beer. If you don't have these bacteria in your beer, then it won't be sour. It's worth noting also that Pediococcus is really only used, uh, for, or only one species of Pediococcus is used, Pediococcus damnosus. When it comes to Lactobacillus, it are, there are many species, and within those species there are many strains. Another thing we need to talk about are strains. What are strains? Strain is a even lesser categorization than species. This would be something like Saccharomyces cerevisiae, WLP001, WLP002. They're all the same species, but they're different strains. And different strains have different characteristics, at least as far as beer goes. Uh, the production of the beer that they make is going to be different. So this idea of strains will be across the board with Britannomyces, uh, Lactobacillus, and Pediococcus, even though we really don't really talk about those too much, but there are such things as strains in, in those as well. So back to Lactobacillus and Pediococcus, you can see they're very closely related. They're in the same family. They both create, create lactic acid. One difference is lactic or Lactobacillus tends to be fermented at a higher temperature. That's not always the case, but many of the species that are available to us through white labs and Y yeast do like to be fermented at a higher temperature. Pediococcus tends to ferment in the long run. It can break down longer chain sugars and as it does that, it creates more lactic acid. So that's why a lot of sour beers will be aged for a long time, to allow for the pediococcus to break down some of the larger chain sugars and turn that into lactic acid. Compare that to lactobacillus. In general, lactobacillus likes the simpler sugars, and that's why a lot of people will do a pre-souring with lactobacillus. So we talked about the bacteria that are involved. Let's talk about 
the yeasts that are involved, Saccharomyces and Britannomyces. You can see through the taxonomical structure that Saccharomyces and Britannomyces are also closely related to each other, but nowhere near related to Lactobacillus and Pediococcus. They're yeasts. They're more related to mushrooms than they are bacteria. They just happen to be really small. Saccharomyces we use pretty much on a normal basis as clean beers, to produce clean beers. Saccharomyces cerevisiae and Saccharomyces pastorius. That's ale yeast and lager yeast. These can both be used in sour brewing. In fact, they'll probably do most of the fermentation. Britannomyces can do most of the fermentation, but traditionally, normally Britannomyces is added sometimes after the fact, after the fermentation, and it's the one that's responsible for creating the really complex fruity flavors and the funky flavors. Britannomyces is a very complex organism. You can look at some of the links below in this page to get an idea of what are some of the things that Britannomyces can do, but really briefly, it converts a lot of the esters and phenols that Saccharomyces produces during its fermentation. It'll convert those into some of those fruity and funky flavors. Different esters and different acids and different phenols will all create different things through Britannomyces metabolism. Britannomyces can also break down larger chain sugars, just like Pediococcus. It can also break down cellulose, lactose, all sorts of molecules that Saccharomyces can't convert. Britannomyces has this uncanny ability to transform its environment. It'll take all different kinds of chemicals and convert them into other chemicals, giving us these really delicious, fruity, lightly funky flavors. Sometimes it'll go overboard and you'll get medicinal flavors or smoky flavors that are just too much. And the brewer can do some things to, to help limit those. So just to conclude, we have basically four different types of organisms from different genera, Lactobacillus, Pediococcus, which is our lactic acid bacteria, Britannomyces, and Saccharomyces, which is our yeasts. Now there's many species of Britannomyces and many strains within those species. And there's many more probably to be discovered, and there's a lot more research to be done on Britannomyces to fully understand it. But that's the basics of sour brewing, and I hope this helped you understand what is involved with the microbes in sour brewing.